All right, everyone, going to begin into the top prop bets here for NBA today. So yesterday ended up being a pretty good day NBA-wise. Here was the bet of the day from the NBA video. I also had another one in there for Chet Holmgren for under his fantasy score, which was very nice. And then if you paired up a lot of these NBA props with that Nikola Jokic discount for the points prop, you had yourself a pretty good day NBA wise. And so, you know, I did yesterday. It was pretty nice. D'Angelo Russell was a little bit of a sweat up until the end of the game. And then he got there. Same thing with uh, Sangoon. Uh, Clint Capella got there easily. Damian Lillard had himself a very terrible game. Like a lot of turnovers, really po shot the ball poorly. And so be interested to see if we go back to that one, just because coming off of a poor night, really bad night, typically speaking, especially a player like him, you expect to have a better night the following night. And then for what it's worth, this was one of the better, like kind of bet slip combos I found using the nine to five uh, cheat sheet for prize picks. And I also want to call it like Malcolm Brogdon. That was one I mentioned in this video as, you know, probably going to be a very good bet. And then I ended up calling it out in the discord chat. That just brings me to this. I just want to call us out at the start of the video. So, um, this is the last day that this promo is going to be active. Okay. So if you guys want to, and you haven't signed up for nine to five just yet, uh, new members, can get 50% off their first month uh, on the website. So it is available for $10. You get it for $5. Already a good value. This is just kind of my way of saying really thank you guys for all the support, but also, you know, just a way to highlight uh, the NBA content that's out there as well. But now we go ahead and get into today's slate. So today I it's a big slate, so it's going to be kind of more difficult to navigate. Don't get me wrong there, but really throughout the day, we're going to see a lot of good prop bets pop in and out, which, you know, I'm pretty excited for. Looking at the games, I do think that this uh, Indy versus Chicago game is going to be a nice one to attack. We can see 229 for the over and under, a pretty close game as well. The Nets versus Hornets is definitely an interesting one. We got news that Cameron Johnson is going to be out in this one, so uh, I'm wondering what that means minute-wise for, uh, you know, Ben Simmons. Nick Claxton is expected back, though, so he, you know, Ben Simmons was someone I kind of liked a little bit more on the previous slate because of that and so we'll see if he's someone that's still popping uh looking at it, the celtics versus wizards that game is projected to be a blowout which is going to make that game very difficult to know really what to do there this game i'm pretty excited about portland versus toronto now it's a very low over and under uh but portland has been a team and i think the spurs will be this team as well two teams in which four opposing teams we want to attack like i think they have a really good chance to get their over fantasy score or whatever the props are that we're like favoring I think they get a little bit of a boost going against Portland. And Portland was super frustrating last night, guys. Portland, like, they just gave up early. Like, it was like, okay, you really are tanking. The other team had their starters in still, and Portland had their third unit in. Like, DeAndre Aiden got 21 minutes, and it's just like, okay, that's a head scratcher. Uh, and then continuing on, Minnesota versus Atlanta. We'll see if I like that one. Clint Capella, obviously, was one that's really just been a stud lately, uh, but we'll see if we, we like that one. Uh, CJ McCollum, you know, has been kind of a guy that I've been hyping up a little bit as well, going against Golden State here for the Pelicans. We'll see if that's a good one. Detroit versus OKC. I think we're going to like that one. The question is, do we go back to Jalen Duren again today? I know he hasn't like made the final bet slip uh, every single day, but he has been someone I've been calling out as, you know, pretty shocking the number that we're getting on him. But all in all, we're not going to get many games in which we have to worry about a blowout, which to me is going to be encouraging. Now, I do want to call like the the Bucks are favored by five points in that game. You would expect Damian Lillard to have a better game. Uh, Chris Middleton, though, has been ruled out in this game as well. I thought he might just be sitting on the front end of a back to back. No, he's been ruled out again. So, you know, I know the matchup against the Heat isn't exactly the best, but I do expect him to bounce back. So enough with the preview. Let's go ahead and get into the breakdown uh, the prop. So I want to start this video off with some props that personally stood out to me, and then we'll go ahead and see if the data agrees with that. So to me, I see this Indy versus uh, Chicago game as one that we might be wanting to attack. And I, I don't mind the idea of DeMar DeRozan for over points, rebounds, and assists, because when we look at that game, we'll, we'll show you guys DeMar DeRozan's game log, like 32 minutes, 33 minutes. Those two games haven't exactly been close. This game is projected to stay close. And so Zach Levine, or sorry, DeMar DeRozan in games, you know, that's going to stay close close, you expect him to get a little bit more work, you know, about four more minutes or so, which to me should be able to get that uh, production there. This is a good matchup as well, but I do want to call Zach Levine currently questionable. I do expect him to play and he played uh, against Detroit and he really went off. And so that's another thing that you don't really expect to happen again. Zach Levine going off as much as he did. And so to me, that's some of that production will be shifted to DeMar DeRozan. So that is one of the, the ones I like a little bit more. And I do want to call it like Nikola Vucevic has really kind of struggled thus far. And he is someone that like, especially considering the matchup, we probably would have just been hammering home this time last year or just last year at all. And so you do expect him to kind of figure it out. We can see the first game, not that many shot attempts, which was kind of strange and then the last two games you know getting a little bit more shot attempts i don't exactly know what to do with that like to me like you could play vucevic in a, in a game stack here 
And I think we, we could get away with that. Like Benedict Matherin is at 13.5 points currently, which the average sportsbook line has him at 14.5. That could be one you're looking at. And then just looking at kind of Toronto as a whole, uh, Dennis Schroeder has been someone that has been playing extremely well. Once again, I do think that this is going to be a matchup that we find ourselves targeting throughout this whole season. So maybe he's someone you guys could be looking at tonight. Uh, that does feel like a little bit too tight. One that I do like is going to be Scotty Barnes, actually. So Scotty Barnes is really going to be the focal point of this team. It seems like the usage rate is extremely high right now, and the production is extremely high. In a game against Philly on the 28th, he was kind of struggling for most of the game and then turned it up uh, in the second half. And we look at that game against Minnesota. He almost got there. You know, he's at 30 uh, points, rebounds, and assists. That game was just a low-scoring game. So as long as this game is at least favored for Toronto win like they are, then I do see Scotty Barnes being able to get the over there as well. He might be someone that we potentially look at, though, for fantasy points, depending on what the line is, because we see the blocks uh, and and steals as well. You can get there. Turnovers, that was alarming against Chicago. Don't love that, but he is someone that you know is just involved in this offense. The use is ex extremely high, so I do think he is someone I, I would want to be looking at to start the day. Uh, from there for Portland, we did get news that Simons is going to be out as well, so like players that you would see Probably get a boost as Grant, Aiden, Sharp, but with that team seemingly not caring about minutes, like that was that was weird. And it could have just been the case of it being the front end of a back to back and why they were limited minutes. But I just I don't see how Aiden only getting 21 minutes was smart, and that could be why the front end of a back to back. But the only player that really got significant minutes was uh, Sharp, and so I, I never like to really bank on games blowing out or staying close. But their their lines are all too low. I would say the Portland Trailblazers thus far, and if the game does stay close, they should be able to get the overs there. Clint Capella, I'm kind of fine rolling with this. Now, he does get a more difficult matchup going against Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. At the same time, he looked really good against Giannis and Brooke Lopez. Like, he really kind of stood out. Jalen Johnson had himself a good game as well, but Clint Capella kind of easily got there, and then really the whole team kind of took their foot off the pedal there. And if we look at it, he only got 23 minutes in that game. And so, like I said, he got there pretty fast and then just didn't need to do much. The worry is that... Yeah, he's probably not going to get that many minutes. He's probably capped at 30 minutes or so, which which is why we're getting a low number for him. But that, that's one that I, I still think we're getting a decent edge on. If Jalen Johnson starts again, you know, this is a decent line there as well. He ended up starting yesterday and only played 26 minutes, but firmly got the over there. Uh, you know, he's a, he'd be someone that gets, you know, an extra rotation there if the game stays close. And so not a lock and low, but those are two kind of seemingly good bets. Now, we don't like the matchup, once again, against Towns and um, Gobert, but still not, not bad lines there. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., he really hasn't had a, a great game just yet. Uh, really was a letdown last game. Uh, going against Dallas, you would think that he'd be able to have a better game. Uh, that's kind of a good line. You see Zaire Williams really having a productive season thus far. And for what's worth, like, here's Jaron Jackson Jr.'s uh, lines like first game didn't have that many shot attempts really had himself a bad game hasn't gotten the rebounds really going had a good game against denver uh washington you would have thought he would have had a really good game against and that didn't occur four for 12 that's not that good didn't have that many rebounds and part of that is due to xavier tillman playing a little bit better there as well now tillman got into foul trouble in that game only played 24 minutes but he is someone that i kind of like today but i actually kind of like him for blocks his uh block line is set at 0 0.5 right now guys and so I think if you give him his full allotment of minutes, if he doesn't get into foul trouble, you don't expect that to occur against Dallas, then I think he has a good chance to get over a block. And I do want to touch on Williams as well. Williams has been getting a bunch of minutes. If he gets 30 minutes again, that line does seem to be a little bit too low. Now, do we expect this production to continue? Probably not, but can he get around 10 shot attempts per game? Probably. And then if that occurs, you know, make 50%, that's five points right there. And then you don't, you know, you need about five rebounds on assists per stat line there so not terrible not a lock but you know one that kind of stood out to me and then i kind of like this detroit versus okc game so we look at okc they have only played one game that has stayed close thus far they blew out chicago cleveland was a close game and then denver they got absolutely blown out and a lot of their players just didn't get the minutes because they're playing on uh uh, front end of back to back now obviously they're on the back end of the back to back so i feel like the lines that we're going to get on them are going to be pretty low and so with that being said let's just go through those so chet holmgren had himself a pretty good game. Uh, do you worry about the matchup against Jalen Dern and like Isaiah Stewart as much as Jokic? Probably not. So maybe that's one you're looking at. Like, I don't mind that one. Cade Cunningham could have a big game. Jalen Williams, I actually do like here, guys. It does feel a little bit too tight. And I worry about the role being reduced because it's like Josh Giddey's there still playing fine. He hasn't been productive lately. But if they like, I would use this prop in a game stab. 
Let's put it that way. Isaiah Stewart, I'm perfectly fine betting the over here as well. Um, just needs to get going a little bit faster in this game. You know, we're not worried about the OKC bigs. The the one worry is just maybe we oh um, Wiseman's still questionable. Let's see. So I wonder, I wonder like has Wiseman been banged up at or not? Is that why he's not been playing, or they just don't like him? Then that might disrupt some minutes, but we are gonna see like this is a good matchup for opposing big. We look at SGA, you would expect him to go off in this one, honestly, in this matchup. I'm perfectly fine betting the over there. Once again, more or less in a game stack. Uh, and then Jalen Dern, you know, we can continue to ride with that one as well. So I feel like we have four pretty good bets. Jalen Dern, over points, rebounds, and assists. Chet Holmgren, over points, rebounds, and assists. I don't mind doing Jalen Williams with that. I don't mind Kenny Cunningham, but SGA, we would do that with. Let's take a peek at Josh Giddy. He has not been productive. Uh, if you guys want to put the under there, I'd kind of be fine with it. He is just not being used the way he has been in the past, and it kind of makes sense. So that'd be an under bet, and, you know, we don't love that, but it's fine. Uh, CJ McCollum is going to be a better fantasy score prop once it comes out like if it's at 30 i'd be fine betting the over there or 30.5 i'd be fine betting the over there but really for the pelicans i don't want to touch any other ones there continuing on this is probably one of my favorite bets on the day thus far is gonna be john collins for over 25 or 20.5 points rebounds and assists uh john collins is someone if you guys watch these videos i've been saying i think he's gonna kind of have the Lori marketing type season where we know he's a talent we know he's underutilized where he was uh, last year or for the previous years and probably would be a you know step up into a bigger role and have a good season we have so far seen that and i think eventually we're going to see this line consistently be at like 24 on the season or 24.5 now that doesn't really change the likelihood of that hitting tonight and we do worry about denver blowing them out you know that is a concern we have seen you know, two of their games have been kind of blowouts as well. Hasn't changed the minutes too much for John Collins, and I still think he's going to be productive here. Uh, but I think if this misses, we'll look back and see that's at the, the reason as to why. It is very much rebound dependent as well. So you could do, I guess, points for rebounds if you wanted to. But that, that was the first one that really stood out to me on the day. And then from there, not too much. So now let's go ahead and switch up and we'll get into what the prize picks and underdog boards are telling us. And I do just want to remind people like this is stuff that updates throughout the day on the top of the hour. And I do like to favor the fantasy score props because typically speaking, those are the bigger edges that we get. So let's just go through these. We're seeing a lot of the unders are currently being favored. Uh, Derek Lively for under 8.5 points. We can see the average sportsbook line is favoring the under at 7.5. You know, he is someone that we really saw his role reduced last game, which actually meant that Lively didn't, like, I don't know, it was weird. So he started in the first game. So, sorry, he didn't start in the first game, started in the second game, and you would think that the lines would be the opposite then. I it's weird i don't really know what happened there that is just something to monitor but i think that's why we are seeing that under being favored there and then we see maxi he got 25 minutes in that game dwight powell against brooklyn got 13 minutes in there uh he was available in that opening game as well he just didn't play at all and he, he did have an illness so i'm wondering if like that was part of the reason as to why to me that just screams we can't trust those minutes and for what's worth at some point this week i want to add in a little part down here where you click on the player we can see the projected minutes that's something i'll try to add in there at some point this week maybe maybe even today uh, we, we continue on mark williams we can see 11.5 this is probably one that's going to be adjusted i don't even know if it's really worth mentioning but we'll talk through it so mark williams gets a tough match going against brooklyn knocking that many shot attempts up you saw a five for six against atlanta it's probably part of the reason as to why i got there got into foul trouble against against Detroit so not really a true indication of what we're going to see from him but you don't expect him to be that efficient again he did go three for three from uh free throw range as well so really efficient shooting the basketball you don't expect that again tonight so yeah I could see betting the under uh points there continuing on Kyle Lowry under points I don't know if I want to touch that uh Carl Anthony Towns under 33.5 points rebounds and assists yeah I don't know I, it's a weird one he definitely had a lot of shot attempts in that first game against uh Toronto then in the second game against Miami not that many shot attempts going up still had a lot of rebounds in that game this this matchup is not one that screams uh, low usage or low point total. Uh, you know, all in all, we know that if we continually go with what the day says, we'll be fine. This would be one of those ones that seemingly is going to be very tight, though. Uh, Jalen Dern over 13 rebounds. Guys, I would rather do points, rebounds, and assists if we're doing that. If he gets 13 rebounds, you know, you expect him to be able to get around, I don't know, 15 or so points. Then you get a couple of assists. I'd rather do that or fantasy score, depending on what that comes out to be. So uh, you could bet that. We've seen that's a pretty good EV bet, but that is crazy at the same time. <laughs> and uh, let's say he doesn't get there. Isaiah Stewart would be the reason as to why yeah josh giddy under points rebounds and assists i'm perfectly fine but in the under there and then continuing on we do see Cade cunningham for over 6.5 assists so that'd be another kind of way to stack that game and let's just show you guys a, a kind of a slip kind of just stack in that game well I, i'll say that for the end of the video i'll show you guys a stack at the end of the video um then from there we're, we're getting some tighter slips let's go ahead and take a peek at 
the underdog side. Once again, we are seeing that a lot of the under bets are being favorited here. I don't know if that's just like early season excitement. We I've seen this a lot more where a lot of the Vegas props are suggesting that we bet the under compared to what the prize picks lines are. Uh, Bendik Matherin, this one's interesting to see this still being favored at 19.5 or it's at 18.5. That's why. So the prize picks line has been bumped to 19.5. So for underdog Bendik Matherin, not terrible. Once again, I don't mind stacking that game. We see SGA for over 5.5 assists is one that's kind of popping up there so some decently good ev bets there like i'd be fine running those two out and then maybe you want to bet mark williams under points i'm fine with that as well so that being said we don't have any fantasy score props popping up just yet let's go ahead and get into the bet of the day all right guys so i'm going to go ahead and give you guys three slips uh, remember with the nba it's a little bit different where a lot of times we do like to go with uh, the fantasy score props so if you want to wait and see i'm perfectly fine with that um looking at it right now i, I like john collins i feel like that's one of the better profits that we're getting on the day the only worry would be foul trouble or that game blowing out. Uh, if you didn't want to use that in a game stack with this OKC Detroit game, that's fine. But I do feel like the, this is a good way to go about stacking it. Josh Giddy has really struggled. We see that that was one of the better EV bets on the slate. Then I do think Jalen Dern and Isaiah Stewart are going to have a good game going against really Chet Holmgren and the OKC Thunder bigs. That being said, Chet Holmgren is at a very low number, especially coming in off of a really good game against Denver. Like he got there in limited minutes. As long as this game stays close, I'm fine with that. And then SGA, I expect to have a better game tonight that is just trying to stat that game like that's not the official bet of the day and this is the struggle with an 11 game slate is like there's so many bets that kind of stand out that it's really up to you guys to decide which ones you want to run out there and i know like if you just use the bet of the day throughout the past year throughout the month of october you've been pretty profitable uh like this would be my nba bet of the day i'll show you guys one more as well that's just going to be literally the bet of the day my favorite bets for the day this is going to be like the nba bet of the day if you will a little bit confused and i understand but the crowd that comes in either just wants the best bets for the day or wants the best NBA bets. It's that's, it is what it is, right? Uh, but looking at Tillman, I like for over blocks. As long as the mints are there, as long as that game doesn't blow out, as long as he gets to 30 minutes, then I think he has a good chance to get a block. We look at his game lock. That has kind of been the case. Uh, Josh Giddy, once again, a good EV bet. John Collins, I, I like that one. And if I had to choose two just for NBA, it would be those two. Do really like DeMar DeRozan, though, for over points, rebounds, and assists. This game isn't expected to blow out. The one game that hasn't blown out for the Chicago Bulls, he was able to get the over there. So as long as the mints are there, as long as it gets around 35 minutes, like you expect, should be able to get there. And then this is a good EV bet under points for mark williams and then we're seeing scotty barnes i like that prop back going against portland once again that's a that's a team that i think we're going to be attacking this season and then this is just kind of a secondary nba bet just showing you guys what my other favorite bets are for nba i already mentioned these two um i'm fine with those but then we got clint capella for over points rebounds and assists i like that one still uh, i think he'll be able to get there um matchup's not the best but we're fine with that jalen johnson same thing uh the worry with the hawks is that they're coming in against an awesome performance and so the chances of that continuing are not really there Derek lively another good ev bet that we had and then zaire williams i personally think is a little bit too low now let's show you guys my uh, like official bet of the day for the 10th so i do want to show you guys why these ones are popping up so i'll start out with nhl why i'm including this one so on the top end here this is my favorite bet the issue that we see with a lot of nhl props is a lot of them are basically being valued as pushes this one is as well but we do see the underdog line has at 3.5 the projection data actually has set at four and so to me the price fix line is a little bit too low uh you look at the vegas odds they're saying it has a 53 percent chance to get under 3.5 but they're still putting that line out there so it's pretty much being valued as a push it has a strong likelihood to be a push that being said i'll take the over here knowing that you know we have a decent chance at a push hitting fantasy score wise we have one really good one that's gonna be Corey seager my worry is that you know a dude's been running hot uh, he's had an extremely good postseason, but we can see the separation between his line and everyone else's line. Now, this could just be a situation in which uh, the public is really pumping up his uh, Vegas line, but the Vegas line would have his fantasy score set at 10.91. The projection data also agrees. So to me, yes, we are seeing the prize picks line be a little bit undervalued. So that's another one I would want to toss in there. Another one you could also put in there is Max Scherzer. Very much risky, I would say, though does a little bit correlate with Corey Seager having a good game like if Scherzer can get a W I don't mind that but he has really struggled the last two games so someone in a previous video asked if I ever cover um, tennis at all here's a, a prop that I don't mind because you can kind of bet it both ways especially for aces like I like this one so underdog has a line set at 8.5 whereas prize picks has a line set at 7 that to me is a good buying opportunity on prize picks so if you are someone that plays on both sides underdog and prize picks this is one where we have a decent opportunity there so if you want to use those nba bets with with this where you're betting the under aces i'm fine with that 
And then if you want to bet the over aces on prize picks, I'm fine with that as well. That's going to be up to you guys, but that's another decent opportunity we have there. And then for what's worth, football wise, I don't like, like, I don't want to touch this one for Jimmy G either. So not that many good football ones. And this just updated too, guys. I don't know. Do we want to bet the under for Kyle Lowry? That's pretty heavy there. Like typically speaking, we should just be hammering that home. I don't know. I don't want to. And so to me, this is the best slip that we can make currently. I almost want to go back and do some of those under EV bets. I'll do that. Uh, that's not going to be the official by the day, but I will do uh, Lowry under or under points as well. Uh, but we're seeing this is a good hockey prop that we were getting. Most likely going to be a push. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Corey Seager overhitting fans to score. The worry is that he's due for a little bit of regression, I would say, at the same time. Let's continue it. Uh, you could, a uh, weird stack with this is that you could do Corey Seager over fantasy score, Max Scherzer over fantasy score, and then the opposing side of it, bet the pitcher under fantasy score as well. You know, if Corey Seager has a good game, that could lead to, especially at this high of a number, that would lead to Scherzer being more likely to win, thus the other pitcher being more likely to not get the win. So there's a little bit of correlation there. I don't mind that. The data is also suggesting that. And then Josh Giddy, a pretty good EV bet that we are getting. That's going to be all for this video. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you are not missing out on any of the best props. Uh, I typically try to call those out at the start of the video as long as it's worthwhile, as long as I don't think it's going to change too fast. But that's going to be all for today's video. Do want to remind you guys quickly of the promo code that's going on, and then I'll get back into the end zone. This is the promo code. Um, one last day. This is the last day for it, so take advantage of it. 50% off your first 9 to 5 month membership. Use the promo code MBA to activate that. All right, now that is officially it, guys. Thanks for watching. Let's have a good slate, and as always, Let's keep cashing.